children were taken away from me. That I killed her sons. The interesting thing is that fentanyl they took came during the last administration. <laughs> Hold up. Whoa, whoa. What's up, guys? Welcome back. I am Van, and we are all the LFR family. Thank you so much for clicking play. Hopefully, you click that like button, too, like two or three times. Thank you so much. And also, when you get a moment, make sure y'all visit LFRfamily.com. Ask me about the Bang Bang Tea. Much love to all of my new Patreon members. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really, thank you so much. Yeah. This is not me crying, man. I don't, I don't cry thug tears no more. I'm a gangster. I don't cry. So apparently, Biden was torched for disgusting response to grieving mother. But yet, Bill Maher says that he has done an amazing job so far on his new CNN video. Uh, Bill Maher just now interviewed, and he said, I think if it's Biden against Trump, Biden will win. He could do the job of president perfectly fine, and I think he's done the job perfectly fine. A great job so far. That's what he said, verbatim. I think Bill Maher is moving closer, I mean, moving back over to his lefty base. Because at first he was coming more to the center, starting to make more sense, and then he just, ooh, that money looked too good over there. That money looked too good over there. President Biden is facing backlash over his reaction to an emotionally charged House hearing about fentanyl and the ongoing border crisis. Kaylee McEnany, in my opinion, top, probably the best, what you call it, a White House corresponder. Is that what it is? Yeah, in my opinion. Uh, I wanted Trump to look bad all the time. Like I was one of those Democrats who wanted Trump to look bad. I wanted her to slip up. I wanted her to say something stupid, but they could never get her to do it. She always used to give them dag on reporters the business. Rebecca Kiesling, who joined Harris in the Faulkner Focus just last hour. Press secretary. Sorry, not White House correspondent. Press secretary. My bad. Or lost both of her sons, Caleb and Kyler, to fentanyl poisoning back in 2020. Oh, my God. In heartbreaking testimony, she explained that the pain pills they took were laced with fentanyl that came across the southern border. And she tore into lawmakers for not doing enough to stop that. You talk about children being taken away from their parents. My children were taken away from me. Wow. 100,000. Americans every year are having their children, 200,000, because it's both parents, right? Are having their children taken away from them. Mm. This should not be politicized. It's not about race. Fentanyl doesn't care about race. You say, you talk about welcoming those crossing our border, seeking protection. You're welcoming drug dealers across our border. You're giving them protection. You're not protecting our children. It shouldn't have been politicized, uh, but it was. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene posted part of this distraught mother's testimony. Wow. And she tweeted, our government is failing our young people. Thousands are murdered by Chinese-made cartel smuggled fentanyl each month. And Joe Biden is doing nothing to stop it. My heart breaks for this poor mother. And here's how the president responded. Isn't she amazing? <laughs> Oof. She was very specific recently saying that a mom, a poor mother who lost two kids to fentanyl, that I, that I killed her sons. The interesting thing is that fentanyl they took came during the last administration. <laughs> Hold up. Whoa, 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 bro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Where's the joke in two young men dying? Simple question. Even if you feel slighted by being charged with the deaths of her sons. Just want to know, where's the joke? Two people died. Why the hell are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> it was in the last administration. <laughs> Clearly, I wasn't here in the last administration. <laughs> what? She said I killed it. It was in the last administration. They got them drugs. During the Trump administration, <laughs> and they just so happen to take him now. <laughs> Yet, Bill Maher says, this guy's doing a remarkable job. Come on, man. Anyway, I don't want to get started. The audience of Democrats did not laugh with him. Kiesling says she was shocked by his response and is now demanding an apology. Here she is last hour on the Faulkner Focus. How can he sit there and joke about it? You know, he thought he was with a room full of Democrats and, you know, he, he's amongst friends and they can all yuck it up. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Yep, that's exactly what it was. He thought that he was amongst friends and he can say whatever he wanted to say at the time and that they can just go ahead and laugh. Like, <laughs> And this mother, let me just say this, Joe, because Joe is so far removed from being a parent that he does not feel the way that uh, an actual parent feels, okay? Yes, he also lost a son, all right? He, he did, I get it. I get it. You lost kids too, bro. But being that you lost kids too, shouldn't you be able to empathize with this mom more than anyone else? Especially being the daggone president of the United States of America. Come on, bro. Come on, man. I'm sorry for calling the president, bro. That's disrespectful. Come on, Mr. President. That's crazy. Um, what kind of a person does that? Wow, you know, Harris, that was such an emotional interview. And our president started by saying, I probably shouldn't address this. He probably should have listened to that internal voice. Hmm. Yeah, you know, when she laid out that story and there were three victims the night that her sons died taking painkiller Percocet, um, the drug dealer was able to be revived by Narcan. Mm. But the young 17-year-old Sophie Harris, who was with him, also lost her life. And what Rebecca said... What? They were able to save the drug dealer. But the two young men and the young lady there died. And this was hilarious to Joe, Bud to Joe Biden. Wow. So eloquently that maybe the president didn't hear and needs to hear over and over again. This is happening to unseen people because unless it's a cluster like this, it doesn't really get reported on. She made that very clear. And I think that's important for, for people to know. She's giving a voice now to literally hundreds of thousands of family members and friends and teachers and, and people who love these young people in their lives who are missing them today. Um, I don't know why he would focus on the politics of the moment. It's always Trump's fault. It's, it's amazing. And yeah, it's always his fault. According to, like, this is an opportunity to play politics, not an opportunity to be a president, not an opportunity to be a father and show understanding and love and care to someone who is crying over the deaths of her son what he called himself doing was playing chess oh you're not gonna get me because if i show love and compassion then i am admitting to due to being culpable in the deaths of your sons and knew that was trump's fault not mine giggle 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 and it's disgusting because it caused him to then disconnect with what we were all seeing as a human moment from a grieving mom yeah. and reconnect with politics. I mean, it was, well, wow. is he the world's only heart donor hmm. is what went through my mind. It's heartbreaking to see the president of the United States react to tragedy that way. Consoler in chief, where are you? Yeah, and yet there are many moms just like Rebecca that we watched, Douglas. Um, in fact, last year we have the data, we'll pop it up, 100,000 uh, overdose deaths, and about two-thirds of those were fentanyl. This is the first mm -hmm. time in our history that we've seen that number broached. And when you look at CBP data, you can kind of toggle with data on mm -hmm. Customs and Border Patrol. When you put in fentanyl in southwest border, we have it, we'll pop it up, you see 2020 fentanyl overdose mm -hmm. go up, or fentanyl seizures, rather, 2021 higher, 2022. Mm -hmm. You see, so more yeah. fentanyl crossing our border and being seen. And, and uh, I mean, we see the stories every day in the city we're sitting in. People seem to think that fentanyl is this sort of problem of, uh, you know. Let me tell y'all something. Who, what's, what's her name? Is this Hunter? What's her name? What's, what's her name? Harper? Today she looks exceptionally fly in her black. Yeah, she looks, she, Harris. Harris looks amazing in her black. Yeah, I like that on her. She looked dope. She's, she's killing it right now. You know, flyover country or someone else's problem or a state that they don't visit very much, all this sort of thing. They always think it's other people. They don't realize that it's people just like them who are losing family members. It's not just right. homeless people in New exactly. York or something like this. It's, it's people across every strata of society, including in this city. It, you know, exactly. Young professionals in this city what the hell? who have been overdosing because of fentanyl in recent weeks. No in recent sense. weeks we see cases of this. And as you say, because it's, unless it's a cluster case, it just washes through. Now this is, you know, we often talk about crises in this country, and this is a real crisis. Yeah, it is. And it, uh, it, yeah, it, is, it is. it's tragic to see the president uh, react like this. Uh, it's tragic to see that smirk on his face as if, uh, you know, this is about humanity. And, you know, you would think that since this is a conservative show, 
Fox News. It got the panel up there and everything that they have to say something negative about Joe Biden because you will assume that if you're only if you're on the left that this is what they do on Fox. They do not because I watch it often with my with my friends here on YouTube. And what happens is that was not a moment for him to start trying to play politics. It just wasn't. That was a moment where one of the American citizens, an American citizen deeply needed the president to understand what she was feeling. But he don't care because guess what? To him, she didn't vote for me, so I can care less about her. Because she's probably trying to blame me for the fentanyl. Who gives a flying freak who's being blamed for it, bruh? I've got off this blame because this is a Trump thing. This isn't a Trump thing, it's not a Biden thing, it's an American thing yes. that we have to Amen. address in this country. Amen. And it's, it's gotten worse and worse. In fact, Lisa, I want you to take a listen to the DEA administrator. Here's what she had to say. say. She said she's seen nothing like this before. What we see happening at DEA is essentially that there are two cartels in Mexico, the Sinaloa cartel and the Jalisco New Generation cartel that are killing Americans with fentanyl catastrophic and record rates like we have never seen before. Unprecedented, Lisa. Well, Harris, first of all, that interview did, I, I could feel your emotion and see the emotion. I, I can't, you did a, a beautiful job with that. That must have been heart-wrenching. Um, you know, regarding what we just heard, you know, look, for the Biden administration to fully address this crisis would also be an admission of guilt, that their border policies are, are failing and allowing this crisis to take place in, in America. That's what I just now I want to say something about him. Yep. The, the callousness of, of laughing at her. I really think that's who Joe Biden is. Exactly. Um, he is deemed a consoler in chief, but only because he has suffered so much loss. And sadly, he has used that loss as a yep. sword and a shield throughout his political career. Yep. Uh, when, you know, inevitably uh, he is a prolific liar yep. uh, and has engaged in this type of behavior repeatedly throughout his career. You know what else happened on the, you know what? Thank you so much. Who is this? Whoever this young lady is, you are exactly right. And I also want to point out the fact, something else that happened during the Trump administration. Y'all want to know what else happened during the Trump administration? That's when Hunter Biden was inside of hotels, smoking crack, holding guns, making love to hookers and recording it for the world to see. That's what else happened during the, during, during the Trump administration. Hunter Biden was wilding out. He was living his best life. Didn't give a damn about his family. Or anyone else, but I digress. Hey everyone, I'm Emily. Hey Emily Campagno, you didn't even get a chance to dag on talk. I'm sorry. I don't know why my dag on right eye keep on. I have to wipe this bad. I'm not I promise you I'm not crying, but it keep watering for some reason. But that's sad, man. I just I can't imagine losing my children. I, I just can't. I really can't. And I'm not a president. Because when you become president, it shouldn't you shouldn't be so stone stone hearted. You shouldn't be so stone cold. Some some like if you didn't vote for me and you're trying to back me in the corner and make me take the blame for this fentanyl. No, that's your issue, not mine. Bruh, guess what? A whole poop ton of people have crossed over during your administration. It was your fault, but you don't want to take blame for it, so you decide not to even give a flying. Mm, mm, mm. You know what? I'm done.